All right, David Nesbitt's here so we can get started. So uh, welcome to Sunday evening worship at uh, First Baptist Church of Turboville. It's such a uh, pleasure to see all of your smiling faces this evening. And I, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised because I honestly thought with well, Memorial Weekend, we weren't going to have that many this morning, and then we even have quite a few tonight. So thank you so much for uh, putting my skepticism uh, to shame and uh, showing up in the Lord's house today. So before we get started, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you for this wonderful day. God, thank you for allowing us to be in your house where we can worship you, God, where we can get to know you. We're so thankful for the many, many blessings that you give us, God, and we just pray for many more. Pray that you be with us this evening as we go through our service. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so we are going to sing, before we do, before we do that, I made a mistake this morning. Shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. But I forgot birthdays. So we have a superstar in the back who turned 19. But before we get to her, I want to make sure we get all the other ones. Uh, Mitchell Floyd's birthday was Saturday. Tyler Miller's birthday is today. And then Kristen Gibbons, her birthday is tomorrow on Memorial Day. So our superstar is also known as Maggie McElveen. So in case you guys didn't know it, uh, Thursday was her birthday. So I would like for you all to sing happy birthday with me because I heard she was upset because we didn't sing to her this morning. So I want to make sure that we get a nice, hearty, happy birthday song for Miss Maggie and for all the others who had birthdays this week. So join me in singing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Maggie Mitchell and everybody else. Happy birthday to you. Is there any, yay. Is there anything you'd like to say? Okay, I just, I want to make sure. Um, I heard she had an amazing lunch but couldn't relax because she was worried somebody's going to come out and sing happy birthday to her from the back. So um, they got the camera on you, Maggie, just so you know. You were just on Facebook. Happy birthday. All right. So now we're really going to sing uh, hymn number 426, Open Our Eyes, Lord. And if I have it right, we're going to sing one and two, and then we'll sing the end. All right. So just go with whatever Carol does. That's what I do on Sunday nights. Talk to a deacon and they'll be more happy, more than happy to uh, let you know what it's about. But hopefully we'll see everyone here. Y you missed it. We sang Maggie, happy birthday. I know. So, yeah, we'll, we'll wait. All right. So um, this Wednesday, upcoming Wednesday, is a, a special business meeting. Well, we have a couple of things that we're going to discuss. So I would encourage everybody to be here, 7 o'clock, normal time. Uh, June 2nd, this upcoming Tuesday, is Brotherhood. We're going to have breakfast for dinner, and I'm so excited for that. Um, Felicia told me it has to be gluten-free if there's pancakes. She hates me. Paul. 
All right, I'm not taking the blame for this one. He sent me a message. It probably says June 1st. I put June 2nd. So this week, this has been my week. This week, I was supposed to be in Sumter for a ordination council for the guy that took over at Wise Drive Baptist Church. Got a text from Kevin saying, hey, this is when you need to be here. Can you still make it? I said, I got it. Put it on my calendar from 12 to 2. At 11.15, I get a text, hey, are you coming? I said, yeah, I'll be there at 12 o'clock. No, it's from 11 to 1. So I didn't make it. Um, so that's been my week. So July 1st, Tuesday night at 7 o'clock is the Brotherhood uh, dinner, and we're going to be having breakfast for dinner. On June 6th, that is a Sunday, right, Martin? Okay, I just want to make sure because I could have my dates all off. Uh, nominee committee names are due on July or, uh, June 6th, and then our deacon nominations will go out as we have some folks that are uh, rolling off, rotating off. And then uh, at 4.30, there'll be a meeting with me with all a lot of the leads and heads to discuss upcoming events to make sure that we're all on the same page, especially as I'm getting ready to go to Alaska for 10 days. Carrie Ann's going to traipse all over uh, United States of America for a month, I think. <sighs> anyway, that's what Jay said a month. Because the pool party, when is the pool party? <laughs> but... Uh, so make sure we have everything under uh, control before we all head out for a little bit of vacation. Then we have a church social Sunday night. It's going to be watermelon and uh, peanuts, boiled peanuts. And then June 20th is Father's Day, and we're going to have a couple baptisms. I'm excited for that uh, for obvious reasons. And then July 17th is an amazing fun day at camp, uh, Tracy's Camp. Everyone is invited, not just kids, not just kids. So I'm being serious. I want to see David Nesbitt in his swimsuit. I mean, he's got a pool at his house, so you know he owns at least one. Um, Mike is going to come. He's going to be in a swimsuit. So I'm encouraging everybody to come. What would you say? Does he have cut-off jeans like they did back in the 60s? That was a, that's a, hey, whatever you want to wear, sir. Um, but July uh, 17th, everyone is invited. So please come out to Tracy's camp starting at 1030 and going until the last person leaves. So we get them for all day. And there will be kayaking, canoeing, swimming, zip lining, and then ropes course uh, if time and kids permit as they, you know, it's hard to pull kids out of the water. So hopefully we'll be able to do that and do some uh, uh, whatever that is I just said. So then uh, July 18th through the 23rd is VBS. So we have a lot of uh, fun stuff coming up. So we just need to make sure that uh, we all have the, the same focus and we're all on the same page. And I'm speaking to myself because I see squirrels and shiny objects way too often. So I need people like Carrie Ann and David Nesbitt to keep me in check. So we're going to meet. I know Carrie Ann, you're like, I got to keep you in check. But... Uh, so July 18th through 23rd is VBS. Let folks know. We'll get the information out soon. Uh, these flowers behind me, I want to make sure I mention again, they're so beautiful, uh, but they're in memory of uh, Miss Gladys on her uh, date of her birth, which was the 20th of May, and that came straight from her garden. So um, beautiful, beautiful flowers presented by the family for her. And I think that's it. You know, I was late this morning. I say late, I came about, I came at 10 o'clock, like I said I would. I won't blame my wife, but we were late, and I walk in, and all I hear from Tyler is we got a ton of announcements. And I'm like, this is what I get for not being here at 945 to make sure. So hopefully all that has sunk in. We're going to start creating slides and putting them in places, and uh, Charlie had some great ideas, so we're going to try and implement those so people can remember. But we, we got a lot going on. We need buy-in. We need folks to come and enjoy themselves and actually act like a family, right? So I'm looking forward to this summer. But uh, this evening, I want to speak uh, very briefly in John chapter 15, which I mentioned the verse a little bit, but I want to dive just a little bit deeper, not too much, um, but I want, I want to dive a little bit deeper. And as we see, if you see the beginning of 15, uh, you know, the process is, at the beginning we talked about these true vine, the pruner, you know, all that stuff. Um, that's the process of how spiritual fruit ends up in our lives and how, how we get it. You know, it's not by anything that we do, 
right? It's by obedience. I mean, it is kind of how we do, but God prunes and he cuts those branches off that we don't need or that are bad, right? To, to, to get us back focused on what we need, but we got to, you know, without him, we wouldn't be able to bear fruit. We need that vine, right? We need the true vine, as he, he calls himself in here in the first few verses. So then in, I want to start reading in verse 6, and we're going to go through a few. And it says in verse 6, John chapter 15, verse 6, If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that you may, uh, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends and if you do what I command you, no longer do I call you servants for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. So we see the importance of abide, right? Everybody knows what abide means. It means you're with that individual. You're in the same space. Not only are you in the same space, but you, you think along the same lines, right? There's a reason why uh, Jesus abides with us. The Holy Spirit abides with us. It's because we're supposed to be about whose work? His work. Right. And if we and if we don't, if we're not, you know, if there's a person that's not saved, does not accept salvation. What does it say? We're like branches, you know, that just wither up. They die. The sun has just killed them, which is what happens to anything that I try to grow. Um, even if I put miracle grow on it, it's going to wither up and die. But that's that's what that is. That is like. So it's important that we understand that we are commanded. We are told to abide with him. He abides in us, but we are to abide with him. So this was important. This is important to us, but this was important in that time because the disciples that he's talking to and the main disciple he's talking to is Judas, not Iscariot, the other disciple named Judas. But they thought, they really thought that Jesus coming, he was coming to be the Messiah of the earth. They couldn't quite grasp the fact that his time had not yet come. That he was going to be crucified, that he was going to die, he was going to ri raise on the third day, and then at some point he was going to ascend back into heaven. They, they couldn't grasp that concept. They truly thought that he was what the Old Testament, uh, he was who the Old Testament was talking about when they talked about ruling the earth. They just didn't see it the same as Jesus did, right? Jesus is, still rules the earth, but he does it in heaven, and someday he will come back. Right? New heaven, new earth, all that stuff. But the disciples were so stubborn. They just, they couldn't wrap their minds around who Jesus was at that time. And who Jesus still is. The fact that he was not there to defeat Rome. That's not what he was there to do. Now he was there to save. He was there to be the perfect example, to be the, per the perfect lamb, or the uh, sacrificial lamb. But he was not there to rule and defeat the evil Roman Empire. So that kind of puts you where the, the, the disciples that he's talking to, their mind frame, he's trying to get them to understand, you know, th this is who I am, this is what I do, this is what my father does. I'm not here to take over the Roman Empire. So in verse um, 9, he starts talking about the love, right? As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. We see abide a lot in those first few verses. So that tells you how important that is to be with Christ. To have a Christ-centered, a Christ-focused life. I mean, that's how you abide in anything with Christ. Now, you can say that you love someone, right? But secretly have ill, I think they call them frenemies nowadays. See, Jesus didn't have those. Yes, Jesus disliked the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes. Yes, Jesus disliked the sin. But he never turned 
anyone down when they come to him and said, how do I be saved? What happened? If they didn't like what he had to say, if they didn't want to give up their riches, if they didn't want to give up, you know, burying their family members, they would choose that over him. So we must love like Jesus Christ did. That's how we abide in his love. We're not always going to get it right. We're not always going to get it right. Matter of fact, we're probably going to get it wrong more times than we're going to get it right. It's the nature of being a sinful human being. But we are to abide. We're supposed to understand how he loves us. And we can say it, right? He died on the cross for our sins. But do we really understand what that means? Do we really understand the pain that he was inflicted, that was inflicted on him when he was beaten? When the crown of thorns was placed on his head, when he was so worn out from the beating, because remember, he was all man and all God, so he was wore out from the beating, he couldn't even carry his cross, which was required of those being sacrificed in that day. So they grabbed some guy and said, hey, carry this cross for him. Then he gets up there, and they got to put the nails in his feet and the nails in his hands, and it's meant that over time they get so weak that they're going to suffocate. I couldn't imagine having anything piercing my hands and my feet and then having to hold myself up so I could breathe with that pain, right? So this is, he loved us enough to endure that pain all the way to, it's beautiful. Like if if you, you know, reading the thing, we've all heard it so many times, but it gets dark, right? After he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it gets dark and then he passes away, he dies. Think about it. Because God could not be anywhere near his son at that moment because he was taking on every sin. Every sin. So it wasn't even, the most painful thing for Jesus was not all of that, is what I'm getting at. The most painful thing for Jesus was being away from his father. For us. For us. That's how much he loved us. That's how much he loved us. And remember, men, we're told to love our wives as Christ loved the what? Church. So that's heavy. That's a lot of weight put on us if you think about the totality of who Jesus is and what his love truly means. It's not just something that pastors get up on Sunday and haphazardly should be talking about. We need to understand it because if we're we're going to love and abide in his love, then we have to know what his love is and where it comes from. And I can assure you it doesn't come from anything of this earth. So then in verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So who was the ultimate example? Who are we trying to be like every day as Christians? Christ. We're supposed to be trying to become Christ-like more and more every day. So how do we abide in his love? He tells us very simply here, keep my commandments as I have kept whose? My Father's commandments. Now, those commandments were given by angels, right? If you read the book of Hebrews, that's uh, the author talks about how, you know, God was, or Jesus was sent lower than the angels, but it had nothing to do with his uh, status. It had him becoming a, a human. So Jesus kept all of God's commandments. And so we're told to keep Jesus' commandments. What are his commandments? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, soul, spirit, everything. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, the Ten Commandments are wrapped all up in that. But that's what, to abide in his love, those, that's the commandments that we have to follow. Two, verses ten. Because we saw the commandments in, in the Old Testament, we can't follow them. Matter of fact, Jesus says, not only can you not physically follow them, but mentally. If you look upon a woman in lust, you have committed adultery already. You know, I, I mean, if, if you look on a man or a woman and, and have hate in your heart, you have committed murder. So we couldn't do them physically. The children of Israel showed that. We can't even do them mentally. But what we can do is we can love, right? I mean, you would think we're, we're, we're made to procreate. We're made to have kids. And we look at these little things and we're just so in love. And you don't know how you can, you know, when you have your third and fourth kid and you're like, I don't know how I can love something anymore. And I love my other ones. And you really can't. But. Um, and you look at them, and they get older, and they start talking back. And But you, you get what I'm saying. You know what a little bit of love is like. We're supposed to be loving creatures. 
So it should be simple for us to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. So if we want to abide in his love, we have to do those two things. These things I have spoken to you that uh, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. So by abiding in him, by him abiding in us, our joy is full. And you notice it's for his glory. It's for God's glory, which we'll get to here in a second. But our, our joy is full. And you can say, well, how, how can that be? I want to ask you something. When Jesus' tank was running empty, and we read it multiple times in the Bible, when his tank would run empty, when the masses were over, uh, kind of over, getting over him, and he needed some space, and he needed some time, where did he go? Did he go to the bar and have a few drinks? Did he go down and look for a, a local person to, to accompany him for the night? What did he do? He went and prayed to his father. He talked to his father. Why don't we do that? Why don't I do that, right? Because most of the time what I do is I lean on my own understanding. So as soon as something bad starts happening or I start getting overwhelmed, I don't think, here, let me turn to God. I think, let me fight this thing. Let me take it on, which causes more issues, does not cause joy. Like going to my father whose yoke is easy and his burden is light. Verse 12, this is my commandment that you love not, uh, love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no one than this than someone lay down his life for his friends. And then here, here is the qualifier. You are my friends. This is Jesus talking. If you do what I command you. You are my friends if you do what I command you. So how do we know if you're a friend of Jesus? Is it by telling somebody on 378 they're number one when they cut you off? Is it looking at somebody that you really don't like, maybe you've had issues with in the past, and you hate them? Is it failing to share the gospel because of the way a person smells, the way a person looks? Maybe they're different than us. Is that love? It's not, right? I mean, it's a rhetorical question. But it, it, it's, it's not love so it, it, he calls us friends because we do what he commands us to do so what happens if we don't do what he commands us to do now does this mean you can lose your salvation i want everybody to understand once saved always say we can go through all that if you truly had the conversion experience right but you can and we saw the disciples did this quite frequently right when he had to rebuke them but you can go back to being a slave, somebody that he has to teach, somebody that he has to um, um, have, you know, that, that basic conversation with like, hey, dummy, look me in my eyes. These are my commandments. I want to call you friend. Here's how I call you friend. Here's how people know that you are a Christ follower by doing this, by doing this. Right? So we, we, we can be saved and we can be ignoring everything that we are told to do. And by everything, I mean this simple thing, love. So then he says, um, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, appointed you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. So it's kind of poignant, right? At the end of it, he ends it with, I tell you these things again. Because he knows how stubborn we are. He knows how stubborn his creation is. So how does he, how does he finish that? He, he, he talks about all that stuff, talks about uh, abide in the fruit, fruit should abide. So whatever you ask the Father may, he may give to you, these things I command you so that you will love one another. It's that simple. It's that simple. But it's really not, right? I mean, some of you don't like me because of the way I look. I get it. I mean, there, there's people that will walk in a room and I'll be like, I don't like them. I don't know why. I've never said hi. I've never talked to them. I don't like them. I, we've all had that feeling, right? We've all had that 
conscious thought about someone. But all we're supposed to do for us to be his, his um, friends, which he calls us his friends, is that we must do what he commands us to do. Love one another. Love one another. So tonight, I want you all to make a tape. I don't know what you do now. Maybe record something on your phone. There's digital stuff. Love one another and then go to sleep with it in your ear going over and over and over again. No? Yeah, David said he ain't doing it. But, I mean, it, it, that's it. We're known by our fruits. The nine expressions of the fruit. But where do the nine expressions of the fruit come from? Love. It's only through love that it's possible that we can bear the fruit. It's, it's only through love. It's only through his mercy and grace that we can even uh, have a conversation with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Love. And I'm, I'm not talking about this, you know, love and everything's fine and it doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter what your sin is. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about loving somebody enough to look at them and say, I want to share a story with you. I know you're going through a hard time, but let me tell you about somebody that can help you. Let me tell you about something that changed my life when I was in your exact situation. But see, a lot of times what we want to do is we're like, that's none of our business. Right? We're going to put our head in the sand. Well, I'm here to tell you this evening, if you are a Christ follower, it is your business. Their salvation is your business. Understand what I'm saying. The, they need to be told about Jesus Christ. And some of these folks that you're going to talk to were probably raised in church, so they know everything. They've heard every sermon. They've, they've read the Bible through and through a hundred times. But somewhere along the line, like the Church of Ephesus, they lost their first love. Who is the first love? Jesus. And so it's important that we talk to these folks. Because they'll bust hell wide open too. Don't think just because somebody's been sitting in church and they, they, they say they're a Christian their whole life, don't think that they're just going to go to heaven. Everybody understands that, right? You don't get to heaven by sitting in church. You don't get to heaven by tithing. You don't get to heaven by singing the best. Thank God, because I would be in hell. You only get to heaven through Jesus Christ. And so it's important that we tell people about that. And we do that because we love them. That's what drives us. That's what should drive us, is our love for one another. Because if we don't have that, then Jesus says we are not his friend. It's that simple. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word, God. And just thank you for the opportunity to come together where we can just talk about what your word says and how we are to apply it, God. And thank you for using such a weak vessel and sinful vessel as I, God, that I, I do, I'm not even worthy to stand up here and speak about you and what your word says. But God, despite me, you have called me and are using me. And I'm so thankful for that. God, I'm thankful for the folks that are here, God, and the, the, the knowledge that they have, the maturity, spiritual maturity, the fruit of the Spirit that they show. God, help us to not ever lose focus of what is important, and that is love, your love, coming down and living a sinless life and dying on that cross for things you didn't even do, raising from the dead and ascending back up to be with your Father. God, thank you for the gifts that you continue to bestow upon us. God, I pray that you continue to keep us safe. Be with those that are sick. Be with those that are in the hospital, God. Be with those that have lost loved ones. Be with those whose loved ones are knocking on death's door. God, comfort them. God, you know the hearts of everyone in this room. And I just ask right now that the Holy Spirit come down and fill them with the warmth and the love if they're dealing with some rough things, God, if there's just some major life events going on, God, 
give them the peace. And only the peace that you can give, the peace that surpasses all understanding. And God, I'm asking for that peace tonight for everyone that needs it. And so God, I just thank you and I praise you. And continue to be with us as we close out this service through prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So we have, so this morning I have Mutt Coker. Um, we're still praying for Brad Munn. He's on the on the mend, uh, healing from his double pneumonia. And then my grandpa, who's having surgery on the 7th to remove a lump from one of his lungs, praying that if it's cancerous, they're able to get it all, and then it's treatable. If not, you know, my, my grandma never smoked a day in her life. She ended up passing from lung cancer. She had lung cancer for 10 years. Um, but, you know, back in those days, they owned restaurants, and people smoked, you know, they had people over to the house, they'd smoke. I mean, that was just kind of the, the thing uh, to do back in those days. Well, now my, my grandpa, who doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, you know, has a lump on his kidney. So um, just pray that it can, it can be healed, it can be worked on, that, you know, it's, it, it's, it's tough. Because my, <laughs> he told my mom, my mom was, you know, kind of not freaking out, but like, hey, Dad, you need to let me know what's going on. I need to know all this stuff. And he's like, I'm 80 seven years old like you know he's ready to go so um and that was how my grandma was she was always like god take me home and that was after she told me that i was enough to make you know make her keel over dead so um but uh, just pray for my grandpa any other prayer requests cancer right roger Bobo Mathis? I take it Bobo passed away. Okay. Bobo Mathis family. Any others? the guy's name okay god knows his name continue to pray for wayne and ann huh and bet yes betty ann continue to pray for her i want to say thank you to all those that reach out to her and talk to her and i know donna spends a good bit of time talking to her and I know it means the world to her. So. Pray for Megan. She's going out of the country for the first time. It's exciting. Pray that God will protect her over there and she won't make any dumb mistakes. Dominican Republic. So pray for that country because the McElveen's coming. Any others? So Kathy had a heart cath, and then somebody talked to her. Who was it that talked to her? Okay. Phyllis Yates, uh, Layla Cross, her arm sore, and they moved the port. I was able to pray with her. She was worried about her blood pressure, and, you know, God is just an amazing God. She had zero blood pressure issues the whole time. So, um, amazing. Remind me, did Kenneth go to his appointment, or did he get moved? Okay. You make sure we know. I'm going to call and harass him. I know. You ain't kidding. All right. Any praises? Yep. 
And it's supposed to rain according to the forecast all this week. Tomorrow's supposed to be nice, like 80-something, no rain. But then the rest of the week, Felicia showed me, it's like thunderstorms and showers, which I know the farmers are going to be happy about. So pray for that rain. Yes. So those of you who don't know, um, Alex and Mary weren't at home this morning. They were actually at church, but they were at church in Sumter because their granddaughter sings. And I want you to, how many of you have been to Alice Drive Baptist Church for one thing or another in Sumter? You see how big that place is, right? Natalie was up there leading worship this morning. So, the, I mean, that's just amazing. Just to see how nervous she was up here to now, you know, she's leading worship out there. It was kids leading worship, but she leads student ministry worship. And so that's awesome. That is a, an amazing praise. And she's got a beautiful voice. So she got it from her granddaddy, huh? Nobody hears me. All right. Did uh, Melba make it back? What time did she make it back? Okay. All right, so pray for Melba. She's on her way back now from whatever she was doing. She's not the woman that was in uh, the park chasing the bears, was she? The rangers are looking for her. They even put her picture on the news. I'm like, daggone. They want to find out who that person is. Leave it up to Melba. She'd bother a bear. All right. Remember tomorrow, 11 o'clock, Memorial Day service at the park. Uh, please, uh, if you feel so inclined, be there. I uh, would love to see you. All right. On that note, we'll go ahead and close in prayer. Mr. Alex, you mind closing us out?